Last time we talked about uh, some properties of black body radiation. The first one was that the power is proportional to t to the fourth power, Stefan's law. And here I've corrected the unit, this is Kelvin to the fourth power. And Wien's displacement law, lambda max times t is a constant such that as the temperature increases, the maximum in the intensity goes to shorter wavelengths. So uh, we want to explain these two phenomena. Uh, now using the classical approach, uh, basically we're going to outline the uh, explanation given by this classical approach by assuming an average energy for each wavelength uh, that is proportional to kT because we have atomic oscillator modes and each quadratic term in the energy gives half a kT. So one half kx squared plus one half mv squared. That is the uh, total energy of an oscillator, harmonic oscillator. So they each contribute kT over two. So it's kT contribution from atomic oscillator modes. So this using equipartition theorem. And this gives us an intensity distribution, 2 pi c, speed of light, kT, divided by lambda to the fourth power, which is basically a constant times kT over lambda to the fourth power. So that's the classical dependence on wavelength, and it's known as Rayleigh-Jeans law. Okay. So if we compare the experimental result, the black body radiation, that's the one in blue, basically follows this increase with uh, decreasing wavelengths. It has a maximum and then it has a decrease uh, as the wavelength goes to zero. However, if you look at this Rayleigh-Jeans law carefully, you see that as lambda goes to zero, this is going to blow up. So what we see that the Rayleigh-Jeans law, the classical approach, gives very good agreement at high wavelengths with the black body radiation, but fails to explain this phenomenon at low wavelengths. Uh, so there is good agreement at long wavelengths, a major disagreement at short wavelengths. So that's the short wavelength region. And uh, the fact that the intensity is going to blow up as lambda goes to zero is known as ultraviolet catastrophe. It's the lambda is equal to zero, should have infinite energy, which is unrealistic. So there is clearly something wrong with this classical approach. Okay, now we have the quantum approach, 1900 by Max Planck. Uh, the first thing is that the cavity radiation comes from atomic oscillators in the walls. So uh, it's the same assumption. We have atomic oscillator modes that are contributing to the radiation. However, the energy of an oscillator can have discrete values with a quantum number and there are uh, integer multiples of HF, Planck's constant times the frequency. Okay, so this n is a positive integer quantum number, f is oscillator frequency, h Planck's constant is 6.626, 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. Okay, so this is a major difference between classical approach and quantum approach. Here, energy can take any value, but uh, in the quantum approach, energy is quantized. It's, it changes in discrete units of hf. So the energy is quantized and each energy level corresponds to a different quantum state. N equals 1 corresponds to energy of HF, N equals 2 with an energy 2HF. Now the, the way this radiation is emitted, the oscillators emit or absorb energy by making a transition from one quantum state to another. So you can see that we have these energy levels, HF, 2HF, 3HF, 4HF. They're separated each by uh, this the difference of HF. And when we have transitions between these states, that's what gives rise to the radiation. Uh, the probability of the occupancy of a quantum state is proportional to e to the minus e over kT, to energy divided by kT. That's the Boltzmann distribution law. So we will find that at high temperatures, the probability of occupancy of higher energy levels will be increasing. At low temperatures, we will have low uh, energy levels uh, more likely to be occupied. So this delta E is equal to HF is the quantum of radiation. 
So if we have high wavelength, low frequency transitions, the corresponding delta E is equal to HF will be small because F is small, lambda is large, F is small. So E to the minus E over KT factor is large since the energy is uh, low, in this case low frequency, so we will have low energy. And there will be many contributions to the emitted radiation with such a small uh, discretization of the energy levels. This is the classical limit. And at low wavelengths, we have high frequencies. The discretization delta E HF will be high because we have high frequency delta E is high. So the discretization will become more apparent. And therefore, uh, the, as the frequency increases, lambda decreases, the probability of transitions decrease exponentially as e to the minus nhf over kt, so that as lambda goes to zero, intensity goes to zero. This is our uh, quantum limit. All right, so uh, we see that the uh, quantum approach gives us a different intensity distribution, 2 pi hc squared divided by lambda to the fifth power, e to the hc over lambda kt minus 1, which is e to the hf over kt minus 1. Now, one can show that if you take this intensity distribution, multiply it by uh, the surface area, and integrate over all possible wavelengths from 0 to infinity, you will recover Stefan's law. So it will be proportional to t to the fourth power. Another feature of this result is that as lambda goes to infinity, hc over lambda kt will go to zero. So when you have an exponential e to the x, where x is approaching zero, this can be approximated to be one plus x using Taylor's expansion. One plus x minus one, we will have x. So hc over lambda kt will remain in the denominator. So that that will be basically lambda kt over hc. So with this simplification here, uh, we have the hc, one of the hc factors disappearing and lambda, uh, one of the lambdas disappear. We have lambda to the fourth power. We obtain two pi c kt over lambda to the fourth power. That is precisely Rayleigh Jean's law. So lambda goes to infinity limit the quantum result recovers the classical result, Rayleigh Jean's law. However, as lambda goes to zero, uh, this term is going to blow up. It will be much greater than one. So it will come outside uh, upstairs as an exponential decay. So you can see this is e to the minus hc over uh, lambda kt. So we can see that in this limit, uh, the intensity will uh, go to zero as lambda approaches zero. So uh, somewhere between very short and very long wavelengths, the product of increasing probability of transitions and decreasing energy per transition results in a maximum in the intensity profile. At short wavelengths, there is a large separation between energy levels because HF is high, leading to a low probability of excited states and few downward transitions. The low probability of transitions leads to low intensity. At low wave and long wavelengths, there is a small separation between energy levels, leading to a high probability of excited states, many downward transitions, so we will have lots of transitions. The low energy in each transition leads to low intensity. All right, so to summarize, we talked about uh, properties of black body radiation, Stefan's law, sigma a e t to the fourth power is the, po uh, is the power emitted and means displacement law that the fact that there is a lambda max which goes to shorter wavelengths as the temperature is increased. Uh, this can, this, the first approach was classical approach using equipartition theorem for atomic oscillator modes with an average energy kt. We find the intensity should uh, scale as kt over lambda to the fourth power, but that actually leads to ultraviolet catastrophe because at short wavelengths this is going to blow up. So the black body radiation cannot be explained with the classical result except at the, the long wavelength range where there is a pretty good agreement. 
The quantum approach uh, presented by Planck states that the still the cavity radiation comes from atomic oscillators, but the oscillator energies are quantized in units of HF and the oscillators will emit or absorb radiation by making transitions between quantum states where the probability of occupancy of a quantum state is e to the minus e over kt given by Boltzmann distribution law. And at the high wavelength low frequency limit, delta E equals HF becomes small. That's the classical limit, and we have many contributions to the emitted radiation. At the low wavelength high frequency limit, the discretization becomes apparent, and the probability of transitions decrease exponentially as E to the minus NHF over KT. And here you can see the quantum result that we obtained using uh, Planck's approach. Uh, basically, by taking the integral from 0 to infinity, intensity times area d lambda, we can recover Stefan's law, so we can show that. And also, in the long wavelength limit, limit we recover Rayleigh Gene's law, and in the short wavelength limit, we see that we must have a decrease in intensity, which was what was expected uh, in the um, experiments. So you can see that the black body radiation intensity decreases at short wavelengths.